everybody, we're going to talk about PH, because that's what Objective B is about. So um, here's a little bit of information um, that's a little more detailed with what you might need to know. So make sure you read Chapter 16. Sections 3, 4, and 5 are about um, pH, and you can practice it. So to know if your solution is an acid or a base, you need to know its pH. Um, you might need to know if it's a strong or weak acid. You might need to know if it's acid or base, and you might need to know its concentration. So we have to talk about water because all these solutions are in water. So water is actually a mixture of water molecules, hydrogen ions, and hydroxide ions. So you can write that as H2O liquid uh, is in equilibrium with H plus ions and OH minus ions. All right, another way to write that is to, is to put H2O liquid plus H2O liquid gives you, if they run into each other every so often, they will turn into H3O pluses and OH minuses. So what you might notice is that there's hydrogen ions, which is the same as hydronium ions, and hydroxide ions in water. We said water is neutral. That's because the amount of hydrogen ion and hydroxide ion equals each other. Okay, so we can write what's called a constant, equilibrium constant for water. So we would put the products um, H3O plus or H plus times the other product, OH minus, over the reactants, but notice the reactants are liquid. So this is called a K, so it's an equilibrium constant for water, so we're going to call it KW. And there's actually a number already for this. KW, or the equilibrium constant for water, is 1 times 10 to the negative 14. Okay? So this equals, the KW is that and that. But every time you get one of those, you have one of those. So that means these are equal to each other. So we can solve for... Hydro hydronium ion is going to equal, okay, this doesn't equal KW, but the hydronium ion is going to equal the hydroxide ion. And so that means that um, this is going to be X, and that's going to be X. We said it equal to 1 times 10 to the 14. So the hydronium ion concentration is going to be equal to the hydroxide ion concentration is going to equal 1 times 10 to the negative 7. We solve this more. And that's going to be x, and x is going to be for this and this. So in water, there are equal amounts of hydronium ion and hydroxide ion. And so pure water has equal amounts of those ions, and they're very small. 1 times 10 to the negative 7 is point oh 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 one right? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Yeah. That's a small amount of hydrogen ion and hydroxide ion, and it equals each other. That's why water is neutral. So instead of working with a number like that, we say the pH is the negative log of that number, 1 times 10 to the negative 7, and we find out pH equals 7. Okay. So water's pH is 7 because it has equal amounts of hydrogen ion and hydronium ion. So what happens when you add acid to water when you add base to water? Well, if you add acid to water, you're going to get more hydrogen ion, so pH is going to go to 1, or 2, or 3, or 4. So if you have more hydrogen, then pH is going to be big, I mean small number, and you have less hydroxide. So what happens if they're equal? If they're equal, you have H plus equals OH minus, and the pH is 7. But if hydrogen goes up, hydroxide goes down, and the pH goes between 1 and 7. If hydrogen goes down, hydroxide goes up, and the pH is um, a higher number. So we have to know how to use these calculations to figure out stuff about acids and bases to figure out pH. All right. So strong acids. Strong acids, the total concentration of the acid is the total concentration of the hydrogen ion. Why? Because all of the hydrogen ion all of the acid ionizes and it becomes 100% hydrogen ion. So the question here is, what is the pH of 0 0.00356 molar HCl? Well, I'm going to write the equation for the dissolving of or the dissociation of HCl in water because all acids are going to be considered in water. All right, so this is uh, aqueous and this is liquid. We're going to have H3O plus and Cl minus. Equals. 
equally. So if we were to write an equilibrium constant for this, we would have the constant equals the products H3O plus times Cl minus over the reactants HCl. And that's um, like that. We won't put water in. All right, now, if this ionizes completely, then there's zero of that at equilibrium and zero of that. So if you have zero on the bottom, you can't really do that. So the K that ionizes completely is very large, very large. We can't even really measure it because there's not HCl in it. So the K for a strong acid is very large. So if you look that up on the um, table that I'm going to show you in a little bit, you'll see for strong acids, it's going to say very large. So if we want to know the pH of a strong acid, we write the equation, we know it's an acid, one, it's acid. We know that it is strong, okay, which means large Ka, very large Ka. Right. So I call this Ka because this is acid. It's an equilibrium constant. And so um, when we're solving this, we know that the H plus is going to equal the concentration of the acid because it's strong, so it's going to be 0 0.00356 molar. So then pH, we got to take the negative log of 0 0.00356. And you find out the pH of this solution is 2.45. All right, another confirmation that it's acid, a confirmation that there's H plus in the solution. Okay, so we're at the pH where there's more H plus. Okay, all right. Now what about strong bases? Again, for strong bases, um, they ionize completely. So if we write NaOH, now here's the difference. Bases usually start off solid. Anyway, they ionize completely. Sodium ions plus hydroxide ions. If we were to write um, a Kb or an equilibrium constant for this, we have sodium ions times hydroxide ions. And most bases... Not most bases. Strong bases usually start solid, so we can't put anything underneath. And then the Kb would be very large. <laughs> because if it ionizes completely, this number's big, this number's big, so Kb is very large. That's what strong base means, a very large Kb. So what is the pH of an hydroxide, of a strong base solution? Well, so one, we recognize it's a base. Two, we know it's strong. So Three, we know that the concentration of hydroxide, so be careful here since it's a base, equals the concentration of sodium hydroxide because it all turns into hydroxide. And it's 2.45 times 10 to the negative. Now, we want pH. pH equals the negative log of H plus concentration in rut row. This is hydroxide. That's H plus. Fortunately, we have a KW um, equilibrium because it's all happening in water. Acid-base chemistry happens in water. And so Kw is the hydrogen ion concentration times the hydroxide ion concentration. So we know the hydrogen ion concentration. We want the hydroxide, I mean, we know the hydroxide concentration right there, right? And we want the hydrogen ion concentration. So we have to find the hydrogen concentration. It's going to be 1 times 10 to the negative 14 over 2.45 times 10 to the negative 3. So we find out that the hydrogen ion concentration in the solution is 4.08 times 10 to the negative 12. All right, so then we can find the pH. pH equals negative log of 4.08 times 10 to the negative 12. And we find out the pH of the solution is 11.39. Surprise? I hope not. This is a strong base, which means there's a lot of hydroxide which means it's going to have a pH above 7, and it's actually close to 14. Okay, Now, that was straightforward because in a strong acid, you already know the H+. plus. In a strong base, you already know the OH-. minus. What if you have weak acids in bases? Well, then you really have equilibrium. So I look at this, and I want pH, so I need negative log of H+. plus. Right? That's what pH equals. I need to know the H+. plus. Here's my acid, HC2H3O2. So that's the equation. That's going to be aqueous. It's going to dissolve into H plus ions and acetate ions. Right. So I can write a K expression for it. Hydrogen ion concentration 
times acetate ion, C2H3O2 negative, over, because it's aqueous, HC2H3O2. So how do you know if it's strong or weak? Well, we know it's a weak acid because we memorize it strong. But we also have access to this Ka table. And this is only part of it. So there's going to be some more stuff up here and more stuff down here. But um, notice the strong acids have very large Ka's. So we know that they're strong. Everybody else is considered weak. And here's acetic acid. This is the one we're working with now. So we know the Ka is 1.8 times 10 to the 5th. So going back, I know the Ka equals 1.8 times 10 to the negative 5th. All right. So what does this mean? Well, we got to ice it. I C E. Initially, we have 0.42 molar H C 2 and we have none of that. When we put it into water, it's going to change. Some of this is going to break apart, and it's going to make some of that and some of that. Okay, so at equilibrium, we're going to have 0.42 minus X of that, X of that, and X of that. So we plug it into our Ka, because we need this number to find pH. So plug in X and X over 0.42 minus X. And then we solve this mathematically to figure out what the pH or what the H plus is. Okay, so we're looking for X. So we have to use the quadratic formula to solve this one. We find out that X squared, I'm sorry, X, yeah. So the formula is X squared plus 1.85, 1.8 times 10 to the negative fifth X plus minus 7.5, 6 times 10 to the negative 6. If I um, do this out using move this over, distribute the 1.8, um, etc. And then I find out that x mathematically equals 2.74 times 10 to the negative third molar. Then I look back and I say x is h plus. h plus equals x in this case, right? So then I could say pH equals negative log of 2.74 times 10 to the negative third molar. And I find out the pH of the solution is 2.56. Okay, so it's an acid, but not all of this dissociates in the hydrogen ion. So I had to solve for the amount that does. So I got my H plus, and then I could take the pH. Okay. So the Ka table, you'll get one of these. You don't have to memorize it. If you want to jot some down so it makes sense, you can. Um, there's also a Kb table, and Kb tables for basis. Notice this is not going in order of strongest to weakest. But if we have a strong base, it would be uh, strong bases, which are all group 1 and 2 um, hydroxides, will have a very large Kb, very large Kb, because they make mostly ions. All right, so we need to calculate the pH of a weak base. Ooh, how do we know this is a weak base? Well, we can look back at the table. Here's hydrazine. That's what it's called. And it's got a Kb. Why are we calling this Kb? Because it's for bases. It's a constant for bases. 1.7 times 10 negative 6. So calculate the pH of 0.35 molar N2H4. So this is a base, and it's weak because it has low, K, low Kb. Kb. All right, so we need an equation. Now, here's where you have to show water. For the acids, you don't have to show water, but you can. So this plus water, that's the base. So what happens, it's going to take on an H+. plus. So I'm going to add that H+, plus to the end of my molecule with the other H's, and so it's going to be H5 with a plus charge. And then the high water turns into hydroxide because it gave away its H. All right, so now we can write a Kb which is N2H5 plus times OH minus over, we don't need water because it's liquid, N2H4. Right. Now, from the table on the other side, I found out that this is 1.7 times 10 to the negative 6 on that other side. So, I need to ice this. So, I, um, I'll do ice down here. Ice and D. So, the I is for initial, 0.35 initially. Of that and no products. That's going to change because some of the N2H4 is going to, to dissociate. When it dissociates, I'm going to get X amount of that and X amount of that. So at equilibrium, I have 0.35 minus X of the initial stuff and then X and X of the products. 
Okay, so how do we solve this? We're going to plug those numbers um, back in to this KB expression. So we're going to have x times x over 0.35 minus x. So I have to solve this for x, and that's what you guys got to be able to do mathematically with your calculators. Okay. So if I do that, I find out that x equals 7.693 times 10 to the negative fourth molar. All right, now i got to stop myself. Hey, Harbin, stop a second. What did you just find out? I just found out x, but here x equals OH minus because this is base. Okay, so OH minus equals X. I need pH, rut row, so I gotta do one more step with bases. I have to say, if I know OH minus, how do I get H plus? So I need H plus to do pH needed. So I can use that water equation again. One times 10 to the negative 14th is the KW for water. All this happens in water. So I need H plus. And I have OH minus as 7.693 times 10 to the negative fourth molar. Okay. So how do I get H plus? I divide through and I find out that H plus equals, uh, I guess already, 1 times 10 to the negative 14 over 7.693 times 10 to the negative fourth. And the hydrogen ion concentration finally is... 1.2999. Now you're probably saying to yourself, so what's with all those heck, um, decimals? Harvard says use three. Um, sorry, this is an 11. Uh, come on. You write better than that? I said to myself. And I said, yeah, sure. Look, there. So the hydrogen ion concentration is. I did this because I didn't want to round up to 0 0.30. So I just kept going until I got a, a not a zero. Now, did I find pH yet? Not even. So now, finally, pH equals negative log of 1.299 times 10 to the negative 11 equals, I'll do it over here, pH equals 10.89. So what does that mean? Well, it's um, greater than 7, so it's a base, which makes sense because this is a base and it made hydroxide ion, and so there's more hydroxide then hydrogen, and that's why it's a base. Whew. All right, we brought it all together, you guys. Equilibrium, pH, acids, bases, Ks. Woo! All right, so calculators rock. You got to know how to use them. You got to know your math equations. pH is actually used in real life to diagnose problems. So this isn't a review. This is a what is it? So pH is used in swimming pools. pH tells us about blood poisoning. pH tells us about crop um, suitability, soil suitability for crops. pH tells us about antacids. pH tells us about acid rain. So all of these things are about pH. And what pH depends on is H+. Plus. And what H+, plus depends on is do we have a lot of it because it's an acid or do we have not a lot of it because it's a base? So if you have a lot of H+, plus, you have a little bit of OH-. You have a little bit of H+, plus, you have a lot of OH-. Minus. So the H+, plus is what we're talking about. But concentrations are hard to talk about when they're small. So we change it to pH. All right. You know Multato. It says self checks rule, and he knows it. So try some practice. Um, here's a few more. Uh, uh, here again are the more detailed objectives or points. And here's what you guys came up with. And hopefully you kind of understand what pH is, how to calculate it, how to analyze what it means.